Sometimes tables record temperature or elevation or other variables that um, you could have been recorded in any situation. And we focus on the first number we're given. Although we should realize that even though this is first, it's not really the very first um, reading you could get. Notice the time's at 1. Well, that means an hour's already passed. So we're also going to be curious to find out what was the temperature at zero, de at zero hours when this thing started. And then we need to notice kind of the range. Just be aware of it, that we went from 60 all the way to 105. Then I look at the pattern between each step. Notice here our temperature goes up 15, and here it goes up 30. So it seems somehow the pattern's going up by 15 and 30, but then I need to kind of focus in on the time over here. Look at the time in the hours. First we have one hour, and then we go up one hour to two hours, and then we go up two hours to four hours. So there's definitely some data we want to add into this table. We want to add what happens at the third hour, and what happens at the zero hour? Well, if one hour moves us up 15 degrees, so one hour moves us 15, moves up 15 degrees, and two hours moves up 30 degrees, we have a consistent pattern. That every hour passes, we go up 15 degrees which makes sense then because two hours went up 30 which is two times 15 so we have a rate our rate or slope m is 15 per hour so that means at three hours well if we are at 75 at two hours let's add 15 to that and get 90 degrees at the third hour also what about zero to climb to 60 degrees, it had to have been 15 degrees cooler before that if our temperature is consistently changing. And we should assume that in a math problem of this nature. Um, they might state it, they might say that the temperature is cons changing consistently, but we'll ins assume it might, might be called a constant rate of change. So if that's true, then that means it was 15 degrees colder at 0 degrees, which is 45. Now we have enough information to create an equation. Remember the format is y equals mx plus b. We don't need to use this format, but I find it helpful. y, that is the dependent variable or the temperature. x is the independent variable. Remember, that's the amount of time that passed. Time is typically independent. m is our rate. We found already that this temperature is jumping up 15 degrees for each single hour. So m will be 15. And now we can start to write our equation. We should have y equals 15 times x, the number of hours. So if we want to know what the temperature is, we do 15 times the number of hours. Plus, well, when we have 0 hours, what temperature are we at? Well, we're at 0 or 45 degrees. So here's our equation. And if you plug it in, if you try any of these values and put them in this equation, you should get the appropriate temperature. Let's try one of them. So after four hours, y should equal 15 times x, or four in this case, four hours, plus 45. Let's see if that works. 15 times four is 60, plus 45, and that's 105. So that's our temperature that's correct after four hours. And we could use this equation to predict for any temperature. What about things are decreasing, like elevation? Again, you know, look at our first given value, which is 100. And then notice, it's not really our starting point. This is four minutes into the experiment. Experiment, excuse me. You should wonder, what is happening at the start? Where were we? Okay, that's the first thing. Next, notice the elevation is decreasing. First, it goes down by 50 and then it goes down by 25. Then let's look at the corresponding hours. Here there's a two hour change and here there's a one hour change. So this is the useful unit 
for one hour we lost 25 feet. Then we have a consistent or a constant rate of change according to what we ha are given so far because for one hour we lost 25, let's say, let's call this feet. And two hours we lost 50. So each hour we're losing 25 feet. So we need to find out where were we when this started. So we're now we're going to jump down four minutes. If we can count it, we can count 25 for each minute. But it's just more useful to do four jumps of 25. In other words, head 100 feet to this, and we should have been at 200. So now, let's write an equation. y equals something, some rate of change, times x plus b. And x is independent, that's the time. Remember, like I said, time is almost always independent. And then elevation depends on how much time has passed. b is our start. In other words, where were we when, at zero? This is our start. Well, it's when x or time equals zero. So we know that. Let's start with that. y equals mx plus, well, when x was zero, y was 200. What's our rate? Well, we said our key rate was found when we had a one hour difference where we went down 25 feet. Well, going down is subtracting 25. So that means our rate of change, our m, is minus 25 times the amount of hours. So for each hour, we lose 25 feet. But we start at 200. And this should work. Let's try it. Let's see where we're at after six minutes. I think it's minutes. Yeah, minutes. Oh, excuse me. I've been saying hours. Um, let's just say minutes to be consistent with the table. So y equals minus 25 times six minutes plus 200. So 25 times, negative 25 times 6 is a minus 150 plus 200. Well, a negative 150, remember addition here? Well, the 200 is positive, has a great absolute value, and it's 50 further away from 0 than negative 150, so the answer is positive 50. Let's go back to our table and see if that worked correctly. And it did. After 6 minutes, we're at 50 feet in elevation.